All right, let's try to keep this short. Well, short as in 15 minutes short. <laughs> 15 minutes or less. Uh, what are we going to talk about? Well, John Stewart. Dang it. So close. So close, John. Um, and I have nothing but respect for the fools, for the clowns, for the for the comedians that because oh, they are the ones that use humor and comedy that to make us take a look at ourselves and expose the you know. But what we have is even some of these guys now are co-opted. Um, John John's Jewish, by the way. How did that work out for the Jews when when they didn't have guns and the other guys had guns? Well, how did that work out for them? How about the Indians? How did that work out for the Indians when they didn't have guns and the other right? There's like oh some fake Hitler. Like you always bring up Hitler and then you know you. Whoever is against you must be crazy, right? Because that could never happen in the United States. Come on, John, that's crazy. Look, a government that go it only happens over there to them. We only go over there to Pakistan and and drone those guys. It would never happen here. We only like Iraq. What happened in Iraq and Pakistan and Afghanistan and and oh, gee, the list gets kind of long. Uh, Vietnam and Yemen and various African countries. That would never happen here. Governments that uh, commit atrocities over there, like brown people, they would never do it here to us. That would never happen. Ask the Indians, they'll tell you. Ask the Japanese in our country, that, that would never happen. Um, there are Germans, because this is the thing, we have, like, they try to make it seem like these Germans were insane, evil people and the whole culture. No, they had high society, they had high culture, they were civilized, and there were people that went to their graves unable to comprehend what happened <laughs> with the Third Reich and the atrocities that were committed under Hitler. And it's the same thing here. Americans unable to comp comprehend that it happens every, it's not... It doesn't matter who the people are. We try to make it seem like that that it's different this time. It's not different this time. It doesn't matter. We're all the same people, whether it's Chinese or Russians or Americans or Mexican. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It's one person here. It's one. We're one people, and it happens. The I mean, the work of Joseph Campbell. Take a look at that work. But it's the same people that do it every time. It's the same cultures every time. We, that human nature, it's not different. There is no fiat currency that hasn't failed because they always print too much. They all QE, this whole show that they're going to put on about <laughs> about how we need to raise the debt ceiling and one side is going to say this and the other side is going to say it. No, they know they were gonna, we have to raise the debt ceiling. There's no way. They're going to keep printing until it's worthless. It's happened every time throughout. There has never not been a time where it didn't fail. It's never not happened. Get it through your head. It's never not happened and this time isn't different okay same thing with empires empires always fail why do empires always fail because the people that get in control and the people that take over the government and rule others always abuse their power always every single and this time obviously isn't different our our, our what is it congress has a five percent approval rating they ain't fooling us <laughs> you know but the, the government is the problem not the solution and it's slowly but surely creeping into the minds of the masses that this is the case, that that statement is true, that the solution lies with us, not with government. Voluntarism, not at the force of a gun, not at the point of a gun, that the idea is so great that they have to be enforced at gunpoint. Right, Sandy, uh, Hurricane Sandy, that's a great uh, microcosm of, of exactly how bureaucrat bureaucracies are inefficient. It is the most inefficient way to do anything. DMV should be very clear. It's the most inefficient way to do anything is through government. Now, the free enterprise system needs to be reined in and checked because people will lie and cheat and steal. But people lie and cheat and steal in government. And this time, the people that lied and cheat and steal, the bankers, were not even held to account for the first time under Obama. Bush Sr. I mean, going back throughout history, I mean, you just, okay, understand, I had Series 6, 63, 7, 23, I don't remember, it's been so long, but... Even people, right, and I used to teach others about, uh, you know, the securities and securities law and pass. And even the people that didn't pass these laws would be able to tell you about the fraud, that, that fraud is wrong and that lying and cheating and stealing is wrong and that liar loans are wrong and that making securities out of liar loans is wrong and selling in the widows and orphans is wrong. And it's not just wrong or immoral. It's against the law. And these laws were not enforced. We don't need more regulations. We need to enforce the regulations that were in place. Now that these guys have gotten away with it, the next time is going to be, oh, so much worse because they are emboldened. And again, when it comes, and that's just human nature, you, no punishment, no problem, right? <laughs> They'll do it again. They'll keep doing it. Even if they know it's wrong, even if it hurts others, they don't care. Government's the same thing where we, now they have the, the NDAA where they'll able, we're able to, like like that one guy said, it's like a mute button where they don't like it, they don't like you protesting, they don't like it, they, they get rid of you. 
And what they'll probably wind up doing here in the very near future is just enforcing the law a little bit where they arrest people for no reason, no charge, hold them for a while, and then make them feel like, oh, we'll, we'll let you go, right? We'll let you go. Be lucky we let you go, right? But we could have held you indefinitely, but we're going to let you go. You think that's not going to quell dissent? You think that's not going to, right? They always abuse the power. There is no man or woman who is enlightened enough to wield this kind of authority and this kind of power without it corrupting and without them doing, even inadvertently doing things that are wrong or immoral. And every time, finally, the, this yoke comes down on the masses and they finally revolt. Every time. It doesn't matter whether it's the United States or, like I said, China or Russia. And it's the cycle of life and we need to raise up our, even Gandhi, again, Gandhi said that one of the blackest things that the British Empire did to the Indian people was disarm them. And people are amazed by that quote because, because Gandhi was about peace. We're talking about peace. We're talking about pen being mightier than sword. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that you lay down and let people rape your children or rape your wife or steal from you. If you have the means to protect your children or protect your wife or protect your pr property, then you should be able to do so. That's a basic human right. Now, this is not a right given to you on a piece of paper. This is an inalienable right, right? The right to free speech, the right to be able to speak your mind, the right to be able to right or wrong, right? And like, that's why I always say, let them speak, let them speak, let them speak. I love the, the racists that, that make comments and leave comments on my videos and so forth. I let them speak. It allows you to see this, right? I love it when the Democrats and these the, the progressives and so forth come out there and try and tell you that they know better than us and that the government needs to come along and, and tell me that I can't have raw milk or that I can't, you know, that I need to take a vaccine instead of having my kids have chicken pox or that whatever the hell it is, right? Because the government knows so much better than I do. And that we, that we need to be able to enforce these things at gunpoint, if, if necessary, for my own good. Now, the, 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 the concept, right, the Sandy Hook and the whole story about gun control, this is the main thing that they're talking about. And they try to keep you so that you don't understand what's going on and what's going on. Is, take a look at this, the signs of the accelerating collapse. I just, uh, it's all there. These are the stats that, I mean, what's coming is unavoidable. Mathematically, it is certain what comes. And see, this is why. I used to try to educate people about money and putting people, you know, putting your money in mutual funds and making it work in the market and, and getting out of debt and making sure that you didn't have debt working against you because the bankers understand the mathematics. People don't. And what they do is they use these uh, simple concepts to enslave you. And people say, oh, that's a harsh word in slavery. But really, when you, when you basically just work a whole lifetime and at the end of your lifetime, you've got nothing, you have no money saved, your kids are in debt, you're in debt, and you're supposed to take and work so that you can pay this debt. You're telling me that's not slavery. Tell me that, that, that you know, taking half of your money for debt service isn't slavery. And if you think, I mean, oh, but at least I get a place to live. Yeah, really? <laughs> Is it your place? <laughs> anyway. The idea is that people need to understand, uh, you know, what's happening and what's going to happen. And they don't want you understanding this. They don't want you understanding what happened in Iceland. They don't want you understanding what happened in Portugal. Let's just take a look at Portugal very quickly. Decriminalization of drugs. They found that in every metric that you could, that was a huge success. They had fewer people on drugs. They had dr drugs went down. They had crime went down. Everything went right because they decided to, to not do what the United States does. Lo and behold, look at what happens there. And then they try to lie to you, right? People with shiny suits and ties and nice hair and women that are right, well-dressed looking at the camera that have seen them actually lie about statistics in Portugal. Okay, no, that was a success. Take a look at that. Now, uh, in our country, and then see the Jim Crow laws and so forth, right? Putting people in jail and the guy that wanted to let these people out, the minorities and so forth, uh, he was a racist just humorous, right? They just flip it around and people believe it. This is the thing. You have to educate. Now, when it comes to the, the bankers going to jail, they didn't go to jail. The bankers have, have, have figured out how to enslave you with debt. They have figured out how to get away with fraud. They have figured out how to get right. And they just bought their way into the government. Just buy the politicians that are supposed to protect you. Just buy and make laws. But they didn't make so many laws that fraud is legal. Right? They didn't make so many laws that everything that they did, they, could, they, they should have been able to, to be, the, these regulations and laws that we have should have been enforced, and a lot of bankers should have gone to jail, but they haven't. And going back administration after administration, going back into the 30s when these guys did some of the things that they did back in the 30s, these were blue bloods, these were like big name families, and these guys went to jail. 
Where, meantime, Obama cannot prosecute a single, I mean, the, the, the Occupy Wall Street guys spend more time in jail than the bankers that decrass the economy. The guys that blow the whistle on torture, those guys go to jail. The torturers are going free. And now they're being promoted and they want to be, make this guy head of the CIA. Oh, it's just unbelievable what's happening. Empires always fail because of the because the people that are in power cannot wield the power responsibly. Neither can they do it without, you know, messing up. And they just they just it's just they it's we haven't got there yet. We do not have and by far we don't have enlightened rulers and masters, right? It wouldn't be so bad if these guys were enlightened and they understood nonviolence and they right and the basic tenets that. But no, this is not. This is exactly not what we have. They use blood and war and guns and so forth to get their way, to take resources, to wield their power, to install centralized banks in other countries so that they can enslave others. And we help them do it. People are waking up, though. Like I said, only 5% approval rating in Congress or so. But on the local and state and federal level, where it's out of control. And people are starting to realize that it's out of control. People are starting to realize that what comes is certain. And there's just no getting around it. So they don't want more and more people understanding this because they wouldn't want you armed and knowing who to blame. Now, would they? <laughs> that would be bad. They don't want you self-sufficient. They want you to be able to look to them for solutions. They want you to be able to, to cry to them for solutions. Because if you have your own food and you have your own power and you have your ability to protect yourself, um, you might weather this storm a little bit better than the people that you know are looking for handouts that are on. I mean, just look at these numbers. It's unbelievable. I'm looking at these numbers. It's just unbelievable the amount of people that are in poverty in this country. The amount of people that are, need food stamps to survive. The amount of people that are working and on food stamps. The amount of people that are right. And somehow these people that are poor, uh, you know, they 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 they're bad people or they're naughty or they're right. Or they're trying to make them feel guilty. Meantime, these bankers who are wealthy, they 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 get far more money and they get to use it first on top of everything else than the, the, the poor people and it's okay because they're wealthy and whatever white and wealthy and, and come from good schools and good backgrounds and good right and they get tons of money from the government but that's okay corporate welfare government right? the, the wealthy and then they try to make it sound like you know the only the only the poor people sell drugs only the poor people are on right anyway and the disparity between rich and poor in this country has never been greater. And it, that never ends well. <laughs> never. And you'd figure that the wealthy people would figure this out and try to keep it from happening and try to make it so that we have a robust middle class instead of raping the middle class. But what's happening is the middle class is being gutted in this country. And that's never, as they move down in the poverty, right? We don't have upward mobility anymore. And there's lots and lots of reasons for it. And this guy covers them pretty well here. And I think you should take a look and understand what's going on and educate others. And then this video about, uh, I've got several of them here, but the main one is, you know, culture and decline is great. Um, understanding how admiralty and common law is is a short video. People need to start understanding that yes, it does make a difference. And there's this concept called indens solenas that they don't talk about. It's a Latin term, it means it sounds the same. You can't tell the difference when you hear it. Um, so your all caps name and your name that starts with a capital letter and then lowercase, capital letter and then lowercase, there's no difference, but there is a difference in the law. And believe me, they, they, wouldn't, they, put, they have the technology now to put that on your license or on your different certificates and documents, but they don't. It's always all caps. People, I mean, and it is, it's important. People are waking up to that fact. Um, and then this one about there is not going to be a recovery. It's just simple as that. There's no economic recovery. You, you better prepare yourself. And he talks about how 20 bucks in 1970 is now $116 you need to, to make uh, the same purchases or the same uh, buying power. You need $116 for 20 bucks. And even if you take a look, go forward, 19, because, you know, that's a long time ago. People are, right, they don't seem to understand that in 1982, you need uh, 20 bucks in 1982, you need to get the same stuff, you need $48, right? For uh, an $8 an hour job in 1982, you need to be making $19 an hour. Nobody's making $19. I mean, the minimum wage has barely gone up. People are still making 8 bucks an hour. And people, I mean, this is, this is the biggest social issue, these social inequalities. And, and it's going to end badly every single time. Empires do the same thing every time. And what we've got is empire and people that have empire mentality ruling us. And it happens it, every time. Napoleon had good intentions <laughs> every single time. It doesn't matter who it is. It's the United States happens to be the guy carrying the ball now. It happened. It's what's going to happen. It's happened throughout history. And if we don't make some huge changes fast, it's going to happen again here in our country.
And when, it, when the government disarms the populace, things end badly. When the government prints too much money, every, there has never not been a time that the money hasn't failed. Uh, anyhow, so these videos, it would be good for you guys to, to watch them and share with others. They don't have enough views as far as I'm concerned. Um, and just go and show, right? show people why did the media keep the Icelandic revolution quiet? Why did they keep the things that happened in Portugal quiet? Why did it, right? Why they don't want you to understand? Like I know people that think it's just a conspiracy that whole Federal Reserve and centralized banking and central. Take a look at the most centralized plan uh, city in the United States and that state, and that would be Michigan, Detroit, and so forth. It's that place is just an utter mess, and it it, it just utter failure. What's happened there, and that's what's coming to the rest of us. The statistics are just, it should be somewhat alarming, but you understand that this, it's unavoidable. So rather than get alarmed, rather than be afraid, educate yourself and do what it takes to prepare for what comes. Simple. Right? Dmitry Orlov, study what happened. The Russians that just had, you know, they had their empire. They never thought that that thing was going to collapse and what happened was going to happen there. And for a while there, we had the criminal element absolutely in control of Russia. I mean, for a little while there, people can tell you that nothing happened without the mafia doing, you know, having a hand in it. And then this is what happens when the government collapses. And of course they don't want you armed. Of course they don't want you self-sufficient. Of course they don't want you educated. Of course they don't want you to prepare for what comes. They'll tell you they didn't see the collapse coming. They didn't see it coming, even though they changed the bankruptcy laws ahead of time. They didn't see it coming. And now they got away with it. They're just, oh, they're just, ple they're reflated. They're doing everything all over again. And the next collapse will be worse because the numbers are huger, much, much larger. We have problems and that they're not going to be solved by looking the other way. They're not going to be solved by focusing on, on uh, majoring in minors, right, and, and gun control and so forth. Yes, it's a very important issue. I will not, I, I, I agree. But at the same time, the, in order for them to take your guns and in order for them to, you know, gun confiscation and so forth, and, which is what this thing has morphed into in the whole debate on guns and society and so forth, it's a good distraction to keep you from seeing what comes and why they're talking about it. Nobody talks about the drugs, right? Again, we, we, we don't focus on the the drunk driver, right? We're focusing on the, the, the car. What we need to do is focus on the drugs, not the gun. But at the same time, we, we need to understand why are they focusing on the guns? Because it's, it's a little more nefarious than, than the whole drunk driving, you know, car issue. Uh, because they don't want you. Uh, in control of yourself and your property and your person and able to say no and mean it. And it, the, and the gun is a great equalizer. Ask any grandma. It's a great equalizer if you know how to use the thing. Does, I mean, a little grandma can take a big man down, right? Same thing as like you look at police officers. Police officers don't have to be big, burly, husky guys. They can be little women and be just as effective, right? Because their authority comes at gunpoint if necessary. Anyway, understand what's going on, educate yourself, educate others. Thanks for your time. I appreciate all your support. I appreciate all, make comments. I enjoy it. Um, and we will talk to you soon. I've gone on long enough. All right. Be of good cheer. Educate others.